QuickBooks Enterprise 2021, Class Tracking Responsibility Accounting, Allocate Indirect Expenses to Departments. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Enterprise 2021. Here we are in our class tracking responsibility accounting practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. We now want to think about the allocation of our indirect expenses, those expenses that we can't allocate directly to a department. For example, we can't simply enter a bill or enter a check and whatnot and allocate it to one department, but rather have to break it out to departments in some way, some shape, some form. So we're going to go back on over to Excel where we did this process. We broke out the rent and the utilities in Excel. These are going to be the rent bill and the utility bill. And we did so using what we would call an activity base, basically the, the square footage to come up with a ratio to be breaking out the rent and the utility to these uh, to these departments. Now we could then enter this as we enter say the bill or the check, breaking it out using the classes to break out in one bill or check. Or you can imagine a situation where we might have multiple different things that kind of fall into this group where they're not classified and then we have to allocate them out. So, and if we have a data input system where we have someone just entering the data, it may be burdensome for them to then think about how they're going to be allocating as they do the data input. So it actually might be easier then in some cases to say, hey, just pay the bill, allocate it to this department, which might be undesignated department or something like that, or unclassified completely. And then periodically, say at the end of the month, we will then go back in and do the proper allocation either by reallocating what is in there, going back into the form or we will uh, enter a journal entry to make the allocation. So let's take a look at both of, of those methods. So I'm going to go back on over to QuickBooks. First, let's just say we're going to enter a bill to the rental company, and then uh, we're going to just allocate it to the four classes as we enter the bill. So we can do that. I'm going to say this is going to be for the rental company. That's what they're called, the rental company. And then we're going to set them up. If I set up the rental company here, then what the problem is if, if I go then to the additional information, I don't really have a class I can set these to because I want to hit four classes at the same time when we pay the rental company. So uh, this, this is no longer usable, whereas it might be effective if we were to use, say, a different method, so, which we'll talk about next time when we do the utilities. So I can't really assign a class in this way by name. So what I can do is say, okay, uh, I'm going to save, you haven't assigned a class, save it anyway. So save it anyway. And then we're going to go down here and manually assign it out. We'll just do it manually, which is not, which is kind of not, not as neat. So then we're going to say, this is going to be rent. I'll call it with the rent, rent tab, going to set up the expense account. Once again, we're going to have it one expense account. I'm just going to set up one expense account and then break it out to the multiple classes using the class feature. We could have multiple expense accounts and then and then and we could possibly use the multiple expense accounts to help us allocate the classes, but then that would result in four different accounts instead of one account, which would uh, make the financial statements a lot longer. We're going to use the one rent account here and then I want to allocate to buy class. The full rent amount was the 10,000, I believe it was 10,000 that we're going to be breaking out. So I'm going to say 10,000 up top. And then I got to break it out by class. So now I got to go, all right, well, the first department, service department one got 1,000. So service department one, 1,000. And this is service department one. And then rent again, we're going to the same expense account, but this is the time. Second department also 1,000. Service department two, 1,000 to service department number two. Uh, this one and then rent again, but this time we're breaking that out to the sales department one So this is going to be 3,000 Sales department one Sales d1 and then we've got uh, 5,000 to sales d2 So rent once again 5,000 so that you can see the plug formulates here for us sales d uh, sales d2 there it is so we should be able to break this out what the, what is this going to do it's going to enter a bill increasing the accounts payable it's going to hit one expense account even though we entered it four times that being rent expense but breaking it out vertically by column to the four departments here so let's check it out let's let's save it 
check it out. So save it, close it, check it out by going to the reports drop down, company and financial. We're going to go down to the uh, profit and loss by class. P and L by class, income statement by class. Changing the dates up top from 01, 01, 21 to 12, 31, 21. So there we have it. So now we've got our rent broken out by class with that one transaction. Looks uh, That looks good. Now let's consider this again. And the imagine what you want to think about here is like, well, what if I'm having someone else do the data input and I don't want them every time I have something that, that's indirect that they have to think about, you know, breaking it out in that kind of manual fashion. And, and also I might not know exactly what the best activity base to use is right now. Maybe I want to adjust it at the end of the month or so so that I can get what I believe is the best activity base to do the allocation method. So we, we then, well, I might just say, hey, just enter the bill and put it into either unclassified, don't assign a class in other words, or enter the bill and assign it to a, a class that basically says it's unclassified or a class that says, you know, uh, that's not determined yet. So I'll, let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna enter the bill here. This one's gonna be for the utility company. So now I'm going to say, I'm going to call it Edison, Edison for the utility company. That's it. And then I'm going to say, this is going to be uh, a setup. We could set it up now. And if I go to the additional item here, note that if, if I just don't assign a class at all, then it'll go into unclassified. Now I'm going to, I would rather assign a class, even though it's, it's not going to be classified at this point, but let's first not assign the class. Then we'll go back in there and adjust it. So I'm going to say, okay and save it anyway even though it doesn't have a class and then we're gonna we're gonna say that this is going to be for uh for the 1000 for the total amount of the 1000 for the utilities that's the total amount here of the 1000 and so it's not it's not allocated out yet so then utilities utilities tab i'm going to set that one up one expense account even though it's going to be allocated to the four different departments so that looks good, looks good. I'm gonna say, okay, now I haven't assigned a class here or there. What's gonna happen when I do this? QuickBooks is gonna create another column, which is gonna be called unclassified. So I'm gonna say, all right, let's check that out. See what that looks like. Now it's telling me I didn't record in 30 days. It's also telling me, hey, you don't have a class assigned. I'm paraphrasing these messages. And I'm gonna say, okay. And so then we're gonna go back on over and we'll go into the P and L, update the data. And now it made this other classification as unclassified to the right. Now that could be useful because at the end of the month, then we can then go back in here and, and reclassify this one based on, on the classification. We could do so by either double clicking on it and going into the data and reclassifying each section of the data, or we can simply take that line item and, and do a journal entry to apply out it out to a class, decreasing the unclassified item and increasing the classified items as basically an adjusting journal entry, which which might be the more appropriate way uh, way to do it. Now, the other thing, the other way we might want to do it, I don't really like having this unclassified thing pop up because I'd like that to only pop up if there's an error, and I'd like to be able to assign, assign a default class to every name, in this case, to the vendor. So to do that, I'd like to set up another class. I'm going to go to the lists dropdown. I'm going to say we want the class list. And then I want another class that basically is telling me that I haven't assigned it yet. So not assigned or something like that. So I'm going to go to the class rise up. I'm going to say new. And then I'm going to say, I want this one just to be called like unassigned, unassigned class. And then I'm going to say, okay. And then now you might say, well, what's the point of that? Why would I allocate it to that? Cause I already know it's basically the same thing. If I go back over here, it says unclassified unassigned is, is, you know, <laughs> is the same thing, isn't it? But it's slightly different because because this one, I'm going to say that I want this reserved for when we make an error by not classifying. And I want the other to be one that we intentionally put to unassigned so that we can then use the assignment with an allocation base at the end of the at the end of the period. I'd also like to be able to go to the vendors over here, vendor center and be able to assign a class to to all the vendors. And I can't do that if I can't if I tell someone who's doing the data input, hey, just don't classify those items, then they're always going to get that pop up and it, it could be a little bit more confusing as opposed to having the class assigned. And then anytime they get a pop up saying something isn't assigned, that's a problem that, that we should fix. So that's that then will make that pop up useful 
uh, to us. So I'm going to then say this is going to be Edison and I'm going to assign a class to it now. So now I can say go to the additional information. We can assign the class of unassigned, unassigned and OK. And then what I'm going to do is, is if I enter the bill now, if I go back into the profit and loss, I can enter a class. So if I double click on this item, I'm going to reallocate it from unclassified, which is very similar to what we called it as unassigned. But but note the distinction. <laughs> We're going to go into here, double click on this one. And then and then once we entered Edison again, the classification would would automatically pop up as now unassigned, which we will manually adjust at this point. So I'm going to adjust it to unassigned instead of unclassified. Then we'll save it and close it. I'm going to say yes and yes. And we change the class reflect. I think that's what we want. Uh, one or more items have not been assigned a class and they should be assigned. Let's cancel this. This one down here, I'd like to assign it a class. So I assigned it up here, but we had to reassign it down here as well. So I'm going to assign it down there. Hold on. So let's save it and close it again. Save it and close it. And there we have it. Okay. So now if I close this back out, now it's an unassigned instead of unclassified. So if unclassified then pops up, then it's basically an error category. Unassigned is not an error. That was what we actually assigned it to so that we could later go in and reassign it. Now, if we were to later go in and reassign it, there's two ways we could do it. If there was a bunch of stuff in, in this area, we could double click on it and go into each transaction again, double click on it and break it out to the proper class. That could be a bit tedious and it also kind of distorts the, the data input that has already been input. So I think the better way to do it would be to say, okay, here's the total in each item that I want to like reassign now according to my, my uh, adjustments and then assign it with a journal entry. So I would assign it with a journal entry at the end of the month or the or the end of uh, or the end of the year. I'll do it as of the end of the year now 1231 and do our allocation. So that would be like an adjusting entry. But now the adjusting entry isn't to assign out, you know, income statement accounts versus balance sheet accounts, timing differences, but rather to assign out the class allocation properly. So I'm going to then say, okay, adjusting entry, let's go to the company drop down. We're going to say make journal entry. I'll do this periodically at the end of the period. I'm going to say at the end of the year this time, 123121. And I'm going to say this is going to be going from the utilities. And it's going to be going out of the utilities for the 1000 that is assigned to the class of unassigned. And then we're going to say utilities. I'm just going to put the utilities all the way down. Utilities, utilities, and then utilities. Uh, are going to be assigned to the four classes, breaking out those classes between the sales department one, the sales department two, the, the service department one, and service department two. And then if I go back on over here and just pick up the numbers, we've got, uh, and they have the service departments first. Let's do it in the same order. I'll go service department one, service department two, so I don't like mess up the data input. I could still mess it up, but I don't think I will. I'm going to do it right. So there we have it. Now it's in the same order. So now I'm just going to pull over the numbers, which are 100, 100, 300, 500. So service department one, two, sales department one and two. So it was 100, debit 100, and then debit 100, and then debit, uh, this one was 300. 300 and then 500 and that should tie out that looks good so now we just we just took it out of the unclassified reclassified it all with the same expense account utilities so nothing's happening to utilities it's just going out and then back in to the utilities account however now classified properly so the columns will then line up to to the columns so same amount 1000 so i'm going to say save it close it we'll check it out saving it closing it checking it out so now we still have the unclassified be because we could see that it was assigned here so if i double click on it you could see the activity going in and out of this unclassified area but we also have it now broken out properly to these locations so if you're doing if you're dealing with someone where you're doing the data input where somebody else is doing data input or you're doing the data input and you want you don't want to spend all day every time you have something to be allocating out to allocate it to whatever activity base you're supposed to allocate it out to, especially if you're using multiple activity bases, 
I would assign another class, which would be unassigned or something like that, something different rather than not assigning a class at all, and then periodically adjust it at the end of the period, at the end of the month or a year during like the adjusting process so that you get that proper allocation and you could just do that on a periodic basis.